Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Today's Friday, March 20th. Before we jump into the alerts and the current positions, just wanna give a little bit of commentary on the markets overall. We've got about a little over an hour left in today's session at the time of this recording. S&P's down 50, Dow down four plus, uh, NASDAQ down over 100, Russell, the strongest of the group, uh, still uh, down just under 1%. Um, so, the, the markets are sliding today. They actually bounced up earlier in the day, or actually last night, and came up to about the 2,500 level, which is actually right at the number that I was looking for on my butterfly, but then it quickly retraced, and, and we're going lower at this point. So by the end, but within the next hour, a lot could change. But uh, basically, you know, I, I still think that we get a pretty sizable bounce higher sometime soon. Now, you know, whether that is early next week, next week, two weeks, I don't, you know, who knows, but I, I think we will. Uh, but I, but I also don't think we've seen the, the lowest of the lows either. So what I was anticipating, kind of my hypothesis, if you will, was that we we're going to get a bounce today and or early next week and then, and then roll over. But who knows what'll happen? That is just kind of what I'm playing for overall. We do have a little bit of long delta overall in our portfolio, so we would definitely benefit from a little bit of a bounce. Um, so that that's kind of what we're thinking here. Uh, let's go. In, let's go. Well, before we jump into the alerts, let's talk about who got caught being hot in the community. So Andrew Roan, he's been with us for a few months and just started right off the bat posting. Uh, good questions, trade ideas, trade, you know, posting some of his trade experiences, both good and bad. You know, I love, I love, you know, some people only want to post their winners, right? And then some people are very frustrated. They only want to post their losers. Love, love when you guys post both good and bad. I think it really helps other people understand, um, A, when you learn from your mistakes, if you can share that with others, that's always a big deal. And then obviously, um, you know, posting good trades too that went well, or posting before you even uh, even know what the trade outcome was, is 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 very helpful as well. So, congrats, Andrew. Keep up the heat, and uh, appreciate all the commentary in the community. Uh, love having you in our NT family. So, starting with the alerts, going back to the first of the week, which was the 16th. So first was a rolling adjusting trade in IWM. So we, did, we continue to roll down our short delta verticals and to keep that short delta. In this case, you know, we kept some in April and some in May. In this case with IWM, we stayed in that same cycle with 32 days to expiration. So if we take a look at IWM, IW, uh, the Russell has been the weaker at, on this entire slide. The, the Russell is Definitely been the weakest. Uh, the small caps getting hit the hardest, but here is uh, here's where we're at. So, price is well inside of our range. Got some more room for some more downside there. So, just continuing to hold on to this for that short delta exposure. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in DE. Kind of a similar situation. This is a uh, this is a short call vertical. If you remember, if you've been with it with this trade since the beginning, it actually started out as a long put vertical. Uh, by mistake, we kind of flipped it over to a short call and we had earnings coming up. So we just left it the way it was. So it's now a short call vertical, but same thing. We stayed in the April cycle with 32 days and just rolled down our strikes from 155, 160 down to 130, 135. And John Deere has been getting ha <clears throat> hammered um, down another almost 4% today. So we are at a point where we could roll this again. And if we do so, you know, April's got what, 28 day. Yeah. 28 days. So um, the one thing about John Deere is there's no May monthly options yet. So we'll take our time with this one. Uh, those will come out uh, eventually and then we'll potentially, and then we'll potentially roll out uh, or depending on where you're at in the cycle, if you want to lighten up your short Delta, you could also choose to close this out. You know, we're over 50% of max profit. Uh, but, but the way I look at this is, um, you know, we always talk about, Hey, you know, close this once you get to over 50% of max, but the, the way, the one thing to kind of consider when you're looking at this is look at the slope of the P and L line. Obviously the further you get down, it starts to really flatten out. Right. But we've still got a pretty steep, uh, uh, equity curve. And as we get closer expiration that the gamma will make that even steeper. So as long as we got a decent, you know, 
we want this for short delta. So as long as we got a, a good profit potential still and a decently steep curve, I don't mind keeping it on a little past 50% of max profit, but that's kind of the, the logic. Once you get past 50, it starts to flatten out a little bit, and especially up here when you're about 80% of max profit. So we'll keep this on. The other thing we don't, you know, we try to, we don't want to get whipsawed either. So if we do get a bounce next week, you know, that's going to put price way up here. So we don't want to roll up and then get the whiplash where it busts out of our range. So it's just a managing and massaging game. Of course, we have multiple positions on, so we never know what's going to happen. So we just kind of uh, do them at different expiration cycles, roll them on different days. And that's why we talk about diversifying those days to expiration, diversifying the time that we the, that we make those adjustments. So that is the plan in DE. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in ES. So same situation. This is a long put vertical, just rolling down our strikes. Uh, in this case, we rolled out. So we rolled from 32 days out to 60 days to expiration in ES. So if we take a look at the, that one, uh, we, you know, we've come down a little bit since that roll, but we've, we're out in a further duration. And so I, I've, I've been getting a couple questions about, well, how do you, how do you choose whether to stay in the same cycle or to roll out? And it's, it's really just a matter of what I mentioned before. We're diversifying our days to expiration. So we just, we choose some, there's not really a rhyme or reason of why we do one versus the other. Um, you know, for example, in, um, in John Deere, there is no May option. So we're, we're staying in April, uh, in ES, there's a lot of different options available as far as expiration cycles. So we went ahead and rolled this one out. Um, and then the other thing, and just the, the other thing to consider is the, the P and L volatility in your shorter duration is going to be a little bit more volatile, meaning smaller price moves in the price are going to affect your P and L positively or negatively, depending on the, on the direction, the further out in dur duration you go, that P and L line does get flatter, right? In both directions. So it doesn't hurt you as bad if the market moves up and it doesn't, you don't get as much profit as it moves down. So those are just kind of the considerations we're looking at when deciding on the time frames and, and where to roll those. And of course, now that April is out of that 30 day range, we're not, we wouldn't roll any more inside that April cycle. Any, any additional rolls will be out to May or a different expiration. Next trade, opening trade in VXX. So we put on a short call vertical in VXX, this one with 31 days to expiration. You know, VXX is just obviously being on a tear to the upside with volatility expanding, stocks going down. And so we thought it was time to dip our toes into that. So if we take a look, you can see we're, we're up a little bit. In fact, earlier today, we we're up quite a bit more, but now with stocks falling, applied volatility is expanding. So we're just up a tiny bit on the trade. But uh, if we put our uh, price slice at the break even, in fact, let me just do that here, to 418 to the expiration date. Let me click on the chart and click back so we get a smooth line. You can see it's got about a 67.5% probability of success at this point. Um, but of course, VXX also has that downward drag, which uh, in a normal cycle with the contango and backwardation, if you understand that, the, the rolling of the futures behind the pricing of this. Um, but really what we're, what we're playing for is we put this on right here and took a little bit of heat as it expanded even further. And now it's come down and we're a little bit profitable. So you know, we're just playing over the next 30 days that, you know, price is going to land somewhere, somewhere down here. And, uh, you know, who knows, may, may not, but we're staying small. We may add to this if we get another big push higher in VXX, but for now, we're just going to hold on and see what happens. Next trade rolling, adjusting trading QQQ. So roll this one out to the May cycle with 59 and again, rolled our strikes down from 201, 206 down to 175, 180. So here's the cues, and price is hanging out right here. So not too far off from where we made that roll. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in Apple. So another kind of same theme here. And this one we just kept in April with 31 days, just rolled our strikes down. So we had we were well over 50% of max profit. So just rolled those strikes down in the same cycle, pretty close to where we did that. So again, just holding this for a little bit more short delta exposure. Uh, rolling adjusting trade in SMH. So this is where we had a short strangle and we rolled the calls down. So we rolled them from 147 down to 121. 
And so we we're not, and, and we stayed in that same April cycle. We're not inverted, so we've still got the 117 puts, 121 calls, and we're just going to hold on to that until we get closer to 21 days, and then we will roll out in time. So price is outside of the range, but if you look at the untested side, the calls, you can still see we got a, a decent amount of juice in those. So we're not looking to roll down the calls again yet, but. Uh, but when we get down to you know end of next week, early the following week, we'll be rolling this out from April to May because we'll be down to that around that 21 days to expiration point. Opening adjusting trade in CL. So our buddy oil, our pain, our thorn oil. So here, the, the one that we added is this one here. We entered a new strangle and look at this. Look at how much the implied volatility has expanded. It's not too far off as far as the price of oil from where we put it on, but implied volatility has expanded so much that it's put uh, pushed our PL line down. Now, I got a question uh, from a couple of people in the community. It's like, hey, you know, is this is it a good idea to be you know, putting on a, a strangle in oil and obviously nobody knows what's going to happen. And if it's not, if it's too much risk for you, for your account, then absolutely don't do it. This is a big contract, right? And we already have, we already have one position on in oil. So uh, obviously do we wait? We wish we would have waited a few days because we would have got an even bigger credit. Uh, but we're talking about a $33,150 max profit on one contract here. So, but that that volatility, the you know the risk, the uncertainty that comes with risk. So you've got to be comfortable. Don't just blindly follow our alerts because we're putting putting this trade on. Uh, you've got to you've got to make that decision for yourself. But uh, you know if oil can you know Ivy contracts, you know that PNL line will jump back up pretty quick. And we got we got a really big range here because implied volatility is so high as well. Uh, but you've got to, uh, you know, do what, do what's best for you. The other, the other thing I, I've been having a lot of questions for email community is, you know, how, how low can oil really go, right? It's a physical product. It's a consumable product from every country in the world. You know, how, how low can it go? And, you know, I was reading something, um, you know, I think the Saudi Arabia oil company, I mean, they can, they can produce oil for single digit per barrel. You know, so let's say nine dollars per barrel. I don't remember what it was. You know, so could oil get down to ten dollars a barrel? Yeah, yeah, it could. Now, do I see that happening? No, no, I don't. Uh, but you know, you don't want to think, oh, oil could never, absolutely never get to ten dollars a barrel because it certainly could. Now, that would be just a crazy situation. But guess what? We are in a crazy situation right now. So. Don't ever say never, uh, just stay small key. And, you know, again, if it doesn't fit, you can also go to some of these smaller ETFs like XLE, uh, XOP, if you're not, if you're not comfortable with the futures too. So that's that. Now we also still have our, have our short put left over from our other position. So we, we just got rid of the call cause it, it was pretty much worthless and we're just looking for a bounce. So, you know, we were on a good, good bounce yesterday up over 20 some percent. And then now we're, we're sliding back down, down about 10 today. So just kind of holding on to that until we get down to about 21 days to expiration. Or if we, you know, if we get a decent bounce, I would look to add that call back on and then just continue to manage that, uh, that short strangle. But just being patient, just seeing if we can get a little bit of a bounce here. Uh, obviously, if it continues lower, that's going to hurt that position. So again, going back to that, if you have this same position on too, and you're not comfortable with that with that downside risk in oil on that short put, then by all means, get out or sell a call against it, or you know, do do what you need to do to make yourself more comfortable. All right, uh, it's oil. Next trade. Uh, Oh, that's where we, we close that call side of that strangle. Uh, closing trade in SPX. So we had a weekly double calendar in SPX. This was a really nice one. Closed for over $2,200 per contract. Uh, just held that for se uh, six days. Um, I know a couple people held on a little bit longer and got out even with uh, even a bigger profit. So great trade in SPX. And we put another one of those on today, which I'll get to in just a minute. Uh, opening adjusting trade in ZW. So... I mentioned, I think on last week's video that we may just, you know, bail on our, our wheat trade just because, you know, there's so much high implied volatility elsewhere. But the reality is the juice in the options in wheat are good as well. And and the more I thought about it, I thought, you know what, I think it makes sense to keep our wheat position or, you know, continue to extend duration on this wheat position because 
it's just such an uncorrelated asset class to the rest of the market. You know, see, so we've got stocks, we've got the euro, we've got oil, we've got gold, we've got nat gas, bonds, and, and wheat just adds another uncorrelated asset. Uh, and, and we had on, so one of the alerts here was uh, we had on a short put vertical here that was in the money, and we got this huge move up yesterday and came right back into range. And so we ended up booking a nice profit on last month's piece of the trade. And then we went ahead and entered uh, a new centered iron condor. So it's pretty close to where we put it on. Um, it hasn't moved much, so just waiting in wheat. So there's the uh, there's the opening trade, then there's that closing of that put vertical, and then uh, closing trade in SPY. So we had an iron duck on in SPY, and price uh, came right down to the duck head. We took this off this morning. Um, I mean, it was already to a point where we, we got, you know, we bought this back for 26 cents, almost nothing. Uh, we could have held on for a few more cents. Uh, I know some of you were looking to get at it. Like I read in the community, like 14 cents and, and that kind of thing. So that's great. If this was SPX, we probably would have left it on longer and potentially just let it expire. But with SPY, with the way the market is moving crazily, let's go to a chart. Um, I can't remember what our exact strikes were on that duck, but, um, you know, what I didn't want to happen was this thing to move out of range and then we end up, you know, closing it for 50% of max profit instead of whatever we did, 80, 90% of max profit. So, um, yeah, I just didn't want to, it was, it was so well centered in our duck head. We just said, let's take that profit and run. And, you know, now we're getting a big move. So it probably benefited us by doing that. But, uh, you know, if remember on a, on an iron duck and I'll show you our, our iron condor position, but the actual iron duck, you know, if this was a duck and this was the duck head, you know, you, if you, if price does expire in between those short strikes, then you can you could let it expire theoretically, and you just it would just uh, you just get max profit. The options go away, but the problem is you know this these we're having such huge swings. I didn't want to get to a situation where we ended up closing between our our short put and our long put, and then we get assigned uh, over the weekend, and we don't have the other options in place because for protection because they expired. So that's why we on on. On American style stocks and ETFs, we typically close those before they expire. Whereas with SPX or RUT, we can let those expire because those settle to cash. Cashish. All right. Um, next trade, rolling adjusting trade in DIA. So another rolling of one of our verticals. Uh, and this one was already out in May with 56 days. So we just rolled down our strikes from 250, 255 all the way down to 210. 215. So if we take a look at DIA, we've got two sets on here. So we've got the one out in May that we're just talking about here. We've got four contracts on that one and prices moved down even more since that roll. And then we've got the one in that's still in April. And again, we're at a point where we can we can roll this one as well. So early next week, we'll potentially look to be rolling the strikes closer on that one. And since this is in April, we'll roll this one out to May as well. So then we'll have two sets out in May, one with three contracts, one with four. Next trade, opening adjusting trade in SPX. So this is that weekly double calendar. And we did the front week with seven days and the back week with just 10. So remember in, and this is the one, just like the one we did last, uh, that we just closed out this week as well. So remember in our course, when we teach that weekly double calendar, uh, strategy in our week, in our weekly income course, typically we're, we're selling the front week at about seven days, but we're typically buying the back week out at like 21 days. So in this environment, I've been shrinking the difference between that front and back week. And I want to take a minute to explain this uh, and why, I, why I'm doing that. So if we take a look at SPX, so here's what that looks like. Um, for one thing, you know, this only costs 800 and some dollars in buying power. So it, it, so by shrinking the difference between the front month and the back week, front week and back week, uh, you're, you're reducing your buying power. So you could get into this on SPX for whatever it was, 800 and some dollars. So that, that's one thing. The other thing uh, I'm doing a little bit differently is I'm widening out 
these strikes. So we, we talk about using about the 40 delta on each side. In this case, I'm going between about 25 and 30. So we're just getting a wider range uh, to, to, uh, to help with some of these massive swings. If we put a set slices to break even, the uh, you can see initially we have over an 80 percent probability of profit on this trade. I think it was closer to 84, 85 when we first set it up, but prices moved down since then. So, um, so that that's kind of the difference. And and so I want to make sure you understand um, why we're why we're the other reason why we are uh, kind of shrinking that distance between the front week and back week. When we, when we talk about like a, a double calendar or a calendar spread in general, you know, we typically talk about, okay, if implied volatility expands, that's going to benefit your trade. Uh, or if implied volatility contracts, that's going to work against your trade. But I, I want to make sure I clarify this because you, you, can, you can get hurt on these trades. For example, I put a similar one of these on in a, in a different account, in my personal account yesterday. Well, vault is getting crushed today, and so price is still pretty dead center. But my P and L line is now down here because that because of that vol crush. So when vol contracts significantly, you can you can get hurt on these. So there's no free lunch when it expands; it benefits you. But here's here's the real. So it's not just a matter of volatility expanding and contracting, and the, and what makes these calendars a little bit more complex is because you're working with two different expiration cycles. And so, for example, on this one, we are selling the front week, which is that seven day, and we're buying the back week, which is that 10 day. So theoretically, we want the front options to contract quickly, and we want the back ones to either contract slower or even expand, right? Because we're buying those ones. So we would we want those to expand. We want these to contract. Typically what happens is the front just expand quicker than do the back. And that's how we profit off of the calendar spread. So if you're looking at the seven day, currently the volatility, the, the, the volatility on these options is about 86 and the ones in the back are about 76. Okay. So so it's really the the expansion or contraction of implied volatility, the difference between these two that really matters. Okay, it's not just if implied volatility contracts, it's not just if implied volatility expands, it's how the different cycles uh, work. So one of the reasons that I am kind of squeezing uh, the duration between the front and the back in this period is because um, three days is not very much, right? That's not a very long time. So the, so the difference, so when these expand and contract, theoretically, they're going to move together a little bit closer, closely than would the back week if they were two weeks out, right? So the back week is two weeks out, and you could say, okay, yeah, but look at those, they're way cheaper, right? So don't you want to buy them when they're way cheaper? Well, yeah, theoretically, but again, it's the difference between the ones you're selling and the ones you're buying. It's not just that they're cheaper. That doesn't mean that they're going to expand more uh, while this one is contracting. Okay. So it's, it's the difference. So the reason I like to do the, the tighter uh, duration between the front and back right now is because, you know, I think these just three days apart, those are going to move pretty similarly, right? So uh, the front will contract the front. Oops, where's my pen? The front will contract at a rate like this and the back will contract very, very similar, okay? So so then what we're left with is pure theta decay, right? So theoretically, our, our profit tent would stay very similar. And as we go through time to next Friday, you can see the P&L line go up. We're gonna exit this either the day before expiration or on expiration date. And you got this big range of, you know, potentially capturing a big profit like the one we did that we closed this week. Um, so that's that's kind of the thought process. Now, you know, the market's going to do what the market does. There's nothing that says that has to happen. But that's why I'm not going out as far on the back week right now because think of it as just from a from a human nature standpoint, right? So if uh, if implied volatility contracts. Uh, there's a lot of juice in these back week options, so they they could they could con, uh, theoretically they could contract much quicker 
even than the front week. Um, so, you know, so it depends on what happens. If some kind of news comes out uh, that says, you know, something's going to happen in a couple weeks, well, that's, that could affect the options out here where they could contract quicker than the back ones. And so anyway, that hopefully that all makes sense. I'm just trying to give you a little bit more of my thought process of why we're kind of squeezing that duration right now, as opposed to doing like the seven uh, and the 21 ish day kind of differences between those. So just got to understand the way that these work if you're going to trade them because it's uh, like I said, there's no no free lunch. You gotta you gotta make sure that you understand the volatility of the front versus the back. But they can be very profitable, like we saw this week, and um, and they, and you can get smacked around a little bit too, like the one I put on yesterday. And vol contracted today. Um, you know, I'm 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 underwater on that right now, and I still have another seven days, so a lot could happen. So I'm not really too worried about it. But you know, we and that's why I talk about we want to get in on these on days when implied volatility is contracting. Now the market is lower now, implied volatility is expanding at this point. But when we put this on this morning, uh, it was uh, I mean the the cost of these double calendars kept going down and down and down. I was watching them for about. For, for a little while before we even put it on because they just kept coming down, down, down. So uh, you're never going to time it perfectly. You're never going to catch the bottom or the top of the implied volatility expansions and contractions. But uh, anyway, just trying to give you a little bit of insight and thought process behind the method to our madness. Hope that helps. All right, last trade, opening trade in Roku. So we threw on a reverse ducky duck in Roku. And reason we did that, Roku was up today, and obviously with the reverse iron duck, we have no risk to the downside. So this thing could tank again. We got no risk there, and we got all the way up to 87.80 uh, to potentially get a duck head. So if we do get a rally into next week, you know, that could potentially come right into the duck head. Uh, obviously, we don't want it to go past that break-even point. If, we, if it does, we'll bail and say, see a Roku, but that is, uh, that's what we got in Roku. Some of the other positions here, we've got 6E, which is the Euro. You can see price is just outside of our range there, but if we look at the untested side, still got a decent amount of juice in those calls, so we're not looking to uh, reposition those yet. Uh, we've got, you know, we've got 49 days to expiration, so we're certainly not looking to roll out to the next expiration, just holding that. Uh, ES, I mentioned GC, oh, GC. Yeah, I want to talk about this one too. So this is our iron condor. Look at what implied volatility expansion has done to this puppy. Uh, so we're just outside the range, but look at how much value we have left in these calls. They're, they're almost at full value still. And so we're just, that's why we haven't adjusted this. I mean, you know, if we want to roll down the calls, well, you know, we like to do that when there's very little value left in that call vertical side, but there's still a bunch, you know, two thirds of the value is still left in the, in that call vertical. The other thing we looked at was potentially adding another one. So as implied volatility has expanded, we would do it in the same cycle. Um, so we wanted to look at adding a, uh, another potential gold iron condor because it has moved out of, out of range. And that would just a get us some more, um, more premium, more credit, uh, when implied volatility is higher. But if I, sorry, my computer's freezing up here. Let me pause for a second and I'll come right back. Okay. So, um, so if we go to, if we were to go to so well, they're a little bit lower now. When I was looking before, the the short calls were still right around that twenty delta. So it's like if if I was going to do this, I'd be using the same strikes, and that's not what I want. Now they've they've come down, so we may look at adding one next week. But at this point, we're just kind of holding on and and seeing if we get a little bit of a bounce in gold. Natty gas moving a little bit lower today, but we've got a this adjusted short strangle, so it's still a little bit in range here. If we look at the calls, still got full value left in the call. So no adjustments on Natty gas yet. We've still got 38 days to expiration, so no need to roll out in time. Bonds. Bonds have been playing a little bit nice for us. Obviously, we had that huge rip-your-face-off rally that was pretty painful, and now things have kind of come back in line. And if we look at where price is, this is kind of both of our positions combined. But if you look at where price is, uh, it's not too far out of that 
out of that range. Here's the one, and if you look at just the untested side, the puts, again, still got over full value left in those puts uh, for theta decay there. And then on the other piece, um, it looks like this, we're inverted, and then, you know, the puts there, uh, you know, we still got a ton of room to, ro to run, and then on the calls, same thing. So, no adjust. There's nothing to do here. There's no adjustments that you can do that will benefit this, except we are waiting. You know, we are still getting positive theta decay. If we look at, you know, where our theta is, you know, we're still getting, uh, we're still getting over two hundred seventy-one dollars a day in the theta decay. So, you know, there's we're we're just playing the waiting game, and and we're at thirty-five days to expiration. So once we get down to closer to twenty-one, that will roll out and just continue to manage this thing. We might, at some point, once we, you know, potentially recoup some of what we're down in bonds, we'll probably cut one of those loose so we just have less exposure and then we can potentially add one back on at a later point. Uh, but at this point, we are, we're just playing the waiting game. ZW, I mentioned that. Apple, I can't remember, did we adjust that one? Uh, we've got this uh, long put vertical here. Price is hanging out right here. Just holding that for that short delta exposure. Uh, I mentioned DE. It's down over 6% now. Just since we've been talking, it's moved down quite a bit. S&Ps are uh, down almost 90 now. Just in the time that we've been talking. Uh, I mentioned DIA, IWM, Roku, SMH, SPX, Spies. Uh, yeah, Spy, we got that iron condor still. Uh, VXX, I mentioned XBI. So here's a, this is a, an adjusted strangle. Again, looking at the untested side, still got a lot of room to go in those calls. Uh, but late next week, early the following week, we'll be rolling this out to the next cycle. And then lastly, XLK, another short delta position, about at 50% of max profit here. So again, uh, we'll potentially be rolling this out to, I, I don't think there's any May options yet. Yeah, there's no May options yet. So we're just going to hold on to this one for now until those come about and then we'll potentially roll out. We could also consider rolling out to the weeklies, but in XLK, I don't think these are that liquid. Let me just check that out. Uh, for some reason, my uh, platform is a little freezy today. Um, yeah, the, the liquidity is not great in those weekly options. So I'd like, I'd prefer to wait till a May monthly cycle comes out. Um, yeah, I mean, these are, these are a buck wide over a dollar wide at, at the money. So we'll see what happens. We will just hold on to that for now. Uh, everybody have a great weekend and we will talk to you next week.